Good morning, everyone. Um, Polynikes here with another Infinity Battle Report. Today we're going to be playing Power Pack versus um, the Tartary Army Corps, TAK. Power Pack in um, our current season is a little different than it was in the last season. Let me grab my pointer here. Basically, well, not that pointer. Basically, the um, scoring has changed a lot, and that's really the uh, really the main difference. You get a point for holding the console at the end of each game turn, right? Which is very difficult because you got to get into enemy territory and have a guy survive or go second and get a guy into enemy territory, right? Much, much easier if you're going second, which brings me to a related point of going second. Really powerful in a lot of these missions. A lot of people are super hesitant to choose going second when they win the lieutenant role because then they have to set up first and give up all that advantage. Um, I'm going to be working on how to do that better, and maybe I'll do a video explaining some ideas after I've played that a few times. Pretty much it's going to involve more camo and more hidden stuff. That way your opponent can go first, but not actually engage too many things that you don't want them to engage. We'll see how it works out. But anyway, scoring for this, right? Activate consoles. You want to activate more consoles, which is a big chunk, three. The uh, Holding on to the button, uh, the enemy... Uh, I guess that's the console. So activate antennas, I'm sorry, and then hold the console at the end of each turn. And then have your console not touched is worth two. So it's good to protect yours. All right. uh, a couple classifieds, worth one each, pretty normal. Big thing about uh, power pack is the deployment and the saturation zones. But before we get to that, just the overload there. That just means you can't hit more than one antenna, excuse me, more than two antennas. You can attach two antennas, but then you can't go for the third one. Right, or it's not useful to do so. Okay, so deployment, right? We talked about it. It's these weird deployment zones here, 16 up, 12 inches over. This uh, makes choosing board sides even more important than usual, because quite often, as will be in the case when we look at this board, where one side is pretty bad for it, and the other side is okay. Rarely are any sides actually good for this. Uh, this mission will also have localized decompression, that combined with the saturation zone that exists for the entire center of the board, right, eight inches from the center line on both sides, means that almost all the engagements in this game will be through a saturation zone. So keep that in mind when list building or planning for it. Uh, snipers will be good, especially in the ARO, long range snipers. Even unlinked ones will be better. Things like missile launchers, noctifers, right, if you have access to that kind of thing. The new uh, Nadir for Hawk Islam, that guy's amazing. Better than an octopher, really. Um, and I guess the only other thing to mention is the chain of command bonus. It's pretty rare to get a bonus for having that skill, right? But in this one, you get two dice at plus three for hitting the objective. I'm really a fan of trying to use these because I've uh, failed a lot of whip rolls to get objectives. Right? A lot of my whip guys are just whip 13 running around doing their thing. So having the plus three and two dice just is just so much better at getting it done. So I will have that in my list, which is, I think, what we're on to next. My list. Um, I've been trying out a lot of things in N4, particularly different lieutenants. I feel the command army is really, really dependent on your lieutenant, and that the uh, the list building is dependent on your lieutenant. So the first thing I do is choose my lieutenant, and that kind of guides the rest of my army. I really like the Suryat. Uh, plus one lieutenant order is great. Um, any way you can cheat the 15 order limit is wonderful, right? So extra lieutenant order, which I plan on using, right, is great. If you have an NCO, it's even better, obviously. I don't in this list, but I've done a lot of work with this guy. He's pretty tough, can be isolated, two wounds, right? So you can you can use him. Um, a lot of talk about Jaith Cutthroats. I'm a real big fan of this Red Fury EM grenade guy. I've done a lot of good work with him. He answers a lot of uh, threats, particularly against like Aleph, where a lot of them have known in cap and not necessarily shock immune. Um, he's really good against like the proxies because of the uh, the shock and the visor, which gets through their mimetism. And of course, he's amazing in close combat, so he doesn't mind being up in the midfield that much. I'm still working on you know the best way to run him, and I think that I've decided you gotta treat him kind of like a Q drone. He needs the proper support, right? If you have him, you should have. Um, a doctor with some pal bots, so you have your doc worm to fix him when he goes down because he's only armor zero, one wound. Um, so he needs support, but I, I do like him a lot. Hi Duke, I'm a big fan of it. Also, I want some visors, so I've got actually a lot of visors in this list. Uh, my chain of command, 
Uh, Caliban, mostly for going for the objective, not so much because he has chain of command. But the chain of command um, does make me more aggressive with the Suryat, which you'll see when we get in the report. M drone, like to have some sensor, that's why he's a good specialist. A couple Dadaratsai, stable. Uh, two mine layers, mainly to protect objectives and interfere with the enemy, particularly when going against Ariadna. They don't like to run into mines when they move up. Icadron. How did I take an Icadron? Probably because I already had my two R drones, right? I don't plan on reloading anything, but he's fine. Icadron, whatever. Um, group 2, Taiga, another sensor. I've played around with the Osnat sensor quite a bit. Uh, moderate success all the time, but I wanted to have a second sensor and uh, something a little more aggressive. So, there she is. And she's in the group with the two R drones, which are just for aero, and of course the Suryat. The this Suryat with his missile launcher, no, excuse me, heavy rocket launcher at MSV is an amazing piece, right? No warband really wants to face off against that. And he's got uh, multi-pistols plus one burst, which I'll refer to as dual multi-pistols, um, which is great if he gets in close. I mean, they're damage 13, multi-ammunition, right? This model's very strong. I've had a lot of success with it. All right. Uh, the plan is kind of to have him on ARO duty, uh, hide behind the mines, sneak around with the Caliban to get objectives, and uh, gun down anything that needs to be gunned down with the Suryat or the um, the Jaith. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I had a Taiga in here somewhere. Oh yeah, there's my Taiga. He's there to like basically trigger mines. Right? I really like the Sixth Sense avoids the minus three from um, deployables nowadays, so he can just run up the midfield and dodge around to clear any mines out of the way. That's the plan anyway. I should say that's why he's in the list. <laughs> okay, the um, uh, my opponent playing uh, Tartary Army Corps. This is his list. Um, you can spend a minute to look at it if you want. Uh, it's all pretty standard stuff. The Dog Warrior my opponent doesn't usually play, but he's been trying it out recently. I'm, I'm a fan of the Dog Warrior. I think they're pretty good units. Obviously the Veteran Kazakhs are awesome. Um, he plays Vasily. Where is he on the list? Vasily here. Without any chain of command backup or anything, which is a little fragile. Um, but usually he does well with it. He has three veterans, so even if Vasily goes down, he still has three regular orders. Um, he doesn't uh, doesn't usually play this few veterans. Usually he's got like four or five veterans. I think he needed the points for the Dog Warrior. Uh, okay, well, you can look at that if you want to. Uh, I'll move on, though. Okay, this is the board. This is actually my deployment. I'll kind of hide myself for a moment here. This is the left hand of the board. You can see my Oznat here, my her Hungry there. This is the shrouded. This is the shrouded's mine right there. Oh, these are uh, these are the saturation zones, the circular ones here that we've put down. They're localized decompression zones, so they're also terrain, which is why the one in the middle of the sat zone you know, doesn't make it a big deal. There's an objective there, there, and one inside the building. These orange things are our consoles. This is my Liberto's mine. This is my Liberto. Of course, the Liberto has mine has no mimetism, so you have to say that to your opponent. So that gives away what's what. We've got over here Hyduk, M Drone, Dadaratsai, Taiga. Uh, let's see the next picture you can see better. Yeah. Also on my left here, this is my uh, J Thread Fury, first Dadaratsai, R Drone holding down the flank. Slight mistake on this deployment here. His facing is like this, uh, like this. It should be like uh, this, right? Because that this area down here is not inside my deployment zone. Paratroopers can walk onto it and such. Uh, so yeah, you really would want to be covering that. Once I got into turn one and noticed that, I was annoyed that, with myself and worried that a Spetnaz was going to walk on there and just wreak havoc. And this is my Suryat lieutenant right here. Again, I didn't make the same problem. He's deploying forward and really should be kind of like that, just in case I don't activate him. But I will. I'm going first, so not that big of a deal. Um, a second, I need to grab the tissue. I've been fighting allergies, so excuse me if I have to blow my nose or sneeze or something during this. Okay, uh, moving along. We saw these, we saw those, right? Uh, mine, Liberto, Hyduke, and M-Drone. M-Drone is looking into this building right here. Hyduke is also. Uh, yeah, I've got my Icadron kind of guarding the back there, my other R-Drone guarding forward a little bit. And my reserve will be the Suryat, who's going to go up on this walkway, but... That doesn't happen yet. This is over to my opponent's side of the board. 
He's got uh, two front of Ics. One's a sniper, one's a missile launcher, I think, or a right lo rocket launcher of some kind. I think that this is the sniper. I don't recall which is which. He's got one veteran Kazakh right down here, making a Harris out of them. And then uh, this is his HPT way in the back. Mine is kind of up in the front. I'll get back to it. More zones you can see there. This is a uh, veteran Kazakh there. This is a uh, T2 rifle. There's an HMG veteran Kazakh right under here. Um, more about his deployment in a moment, but go around and get more. Yeah, you can see him standing right next to that guy there. There's my HVT, which is staying next to my Liberto. Okay, back to my opponent's deployment. This camo token will be Vasily. This will be his ambush up on top. I uh, believe that this was a decoy. This was the stray lock. There's one over here, which is a mine. This is a decoy. There's a stray lock under there and a mine over here. Is that right? Yeah, and a mine right there. A um, little better view of those. And yeah, the one inside the building there. And there's, there's a veteran Kazakh there, you can see. And this is the dog warrior over there. Yeah. Okay, and then my reserve, which is the Suryat right here. I placed him very specifically so that he can see this guy, but not this guy here. Um, and I think he did not have line of fire to this camo token because it was prone, and I didn't know what it was yet, of course. Uh, and then my opponent's reserve is two more camo tokens, which is one inside the building, which will be another stray lock, and one outside the building, which will be a decoy. I really thought it was going to be a mine. I guess I didn't realize that the mine layer stray locks also have ambush. So if he puts down only two camo tokens, one of them's not a mine. He has to put down three for there to be a mine. But I definitely acted as if this was a mine for a little while, as you'll see once we get started. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is the other part about the veteran Kazakh's deployment. He goes on suppression fire. So the option is to spend a command token to go on suppression fire or spend a command token to strip two of my orders. And I'm of the opinion that it's always better to strip the two orders. But I'm open to being wrong, and I really liked this here, because of the advanced deployments, we are within 24 of each other, and he, all, all the guys you can see out there. And he's facing down, I think it's two impetuous guys, right? The Dodoratsai and the Osnat. And... Uh, He's got the Jathan in the open also right in front of him. So he's got all three of those things under suppression fire. And he's at very little risk to himself there. And so he could kill, you know, one, two, or even all three if he gets really fortunate on that. So, and it, or I just don't use my impetuous orders, or I risk the, that happening. Um, yeah, I thought that was a really good use of going under suppressive fire in the beginning of the game. That maybe may have been better than taking two of my orders, right? Because at the least, I'm going to cancel... Some impetuous, at least that's what he's thinking. Or have to deal with that by throwing smoke otherwise or doing something. So that could take more than two orders. I, I thought it was good and made me think more about going on a suppression fire in some situations. Uh, this is just a reminder that the saturation zone is there, right? We have these little things built because we tend to forget that sometimes. <laughs> okay, I think that we are about to get started here. Dadarasai on my right is impetuousing forward and putting smoke out here. That's important because my MSV-1 Suryak will be able to see through it to those guys up on the roof over there. Tiger runs forward. Obviously nobody sees him, he just keeps running. He ends up, yeah, up, up there. Uh, I think a camo token saw him when he came across over here, but they didn't do anything. Yes, they could have. one of them probably could have got a free shot, but then been revealed, right? So I, it's fine if he does, doesn't. All right, this is me deciding what to do about that situation with the veteran Kazakh. He can see him looking out kind of like that over there. Um, and there's another one looking this way. He's not on suppressive fire. But when the Osnat runs, she'll be seen by that. And when he runs, he'll be seen by the suppressive fire. So I think I did the Dodoratsai first. He runs up, I throw my smoke there, and I win the face-to-face -face and get the smoke down. So this is fortunate for me, but not terribly, right? I mean, I was one die on a 17, the veteran Kazakhs two dice on sevens, I believe. Minus three for range while in suppression. Minus three for my mimetism. He's 13, so he should be on sevens, yeah. So I get the smoke down, that's fine. Then the Osnat runs forward along with her hungry. All right, they run over here. 
I think that actually I lost the face-to-face -face roll here throwing my smoke, but made the armor save. And then she just fails guts to the side over there. Oop. Yeah. And now out of line of fire of the other Kazakh. Who I then engage with my lieutenant orders. The uh, Suryat moves over to take the shot there. Remember, this guy is a um, T2 rifle, so he's not in great range brackets. And I've got a good amount of armor, armor 7, 4 plus 3 for cover. And so it's not really that risky for me. I am only burst 3 because of the saturation zone, but I'm not terribly worried about this. And I think uh, I fire, like do nothing, activate again, move back over to the other side. Again, still using just my lieutenant orders. And this time I get a wound through. And that's fine, right? I repositioned my guy a little bit and got one wound through. I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, over on to the other side. I'm activating the Suryat now. Suryat being in group two along with the uh, Osnat ended up being a little uh, order, ma making myself be a little order crunched there. So I wanted to spend orders on both of them. They didn't think I was going to. Because the Suryat activates and he can see down here to one of those camo tokens that was deployed in reserve, like you know, some, something like that. Uh, and I'm not sure, remember, I thought it was a mine, right? So I activate there, I throw a discover at that mine, and then I split burst on my rocket launcher over here at this guy, and at whatever I discover, should I do so. I failed the discover, so that doesn't matter. And then firing over here, I'm firing through smoke, so I'm minus six. He's also firing through smoke, so he's at minus six. So it's really not very good shots. We're both on pretty low numbers. Like I'm plus three, minus nine, right? So I'm on like a seven or something like that. 13 plus 3 is 16 minus 9, 7. Yeah, it seems right. Um, he's on similar numbers back. But I win the face-to-face -face roll. Template goes down, hits both guys. There's no dodge over here. He fails the dodge over here, and both of them burn up. And that was that was great, right? It was perfect. Couldn't have hoped for any better. All right, back to the other side, where my Osnat and the Hungry are dealing with these guys. And again, I think this is a mine. So I just send the Hungry around on his own to right there. He's facing off with the veteran Kazakh and the mine, which turns out not to be a mine. It doesn't declare any ARO. The Kazakh suppressive fires, the hungry chain rifles, and nothing happens. The Kazakh misses and then makes his armor save against the chain rifle. So I do it again. Uh, oh, this is better line of fire. I guess I moved up to Suryat. So now he can see down there a little bit better. Um, yeah, that looks like what I did. Okay. M drone throws a discover shoot through with this camo token, which will end up being nothing. I'm pretty sure I discovered it because he's a sensor. Uh, and then we're back over to the other side again. Uh, Hungry runs forward over to here. Where the veteran Kazakh could see me, I was still in saturation. So he suppressed and fires, I chain rifle him. Again, he misses with the suppression fire. So that, that's pretty unlucky for him, right? He's had four unopposed shots with a heavy machine gun. And he's just missing. Um, I chain rifle him and I get a wound through. So now both the Kazakhs here have one wound on them. I'm pretty sure it was the Osnat's last order. Sends the Hungry around the corner right here into close combat with this Kazakh. Go around the corner and we'll see it. Um, seeing this is probably going to make a hit here, Vasily dodges. And the Vet Kazakh, uh, I think, heavy pistols me. Um, the heavy pistol works, kills the Hungry. The Kazakh makes his save. But unfortunately, Vasily does not make his dodge or his save and is rendered unconscious by the uh, chain rifle. Oh. Pretty sure that's his lieutenant and that he'll be then in loss of lieutenant minus any uh, veterans. Yeah, there's Vasily unconscious. Okay. Then I bring my M drone around. It was over here. It just zips around here, throws off a discover, which I think fails. Then he starts going up the ladders here. Oop, boop. He stays up. Uh, on top up here where he's able to discover um, I think he discovered I think he finally discovered that over there yeah he, he failed on this one here and then finally discovered that which turned out to be nothing so another order he zips up to the top over here and throws down a sensor the sensor catches the guys below him and this something like that so now I can see that there's a mine here and the stray lock over there this was uh, also good because my sensor up here prevents that stray lock from going back into camo on my opponent's turn. Oh yeah, there's the stray lock who's been revealed. And then the daughter outside over here. Oh no, this is actually the Jaith. You see him over here now. He was out here. So I decide to move into the building. My plan for this guy is to 
and the climb will go up these stairs and be up on this little area where he can like run back and forth and see out of these windows as he needs to and get some good uh, good sniping done with his red fury. But on the way in, I think I have a chance to take out this uh, HMG veteran Kazakh right here, right? So I'm starting out here, not in cover, and taking my shot through there. But I forget he's not going to take the minus six from the smoke, right? Because of his six cents. So when I do that, it turns out to be an absolutely terrible shot for me because I take the minus six and he doesn't. And I end up taking an HMG round and going unconscious. So the Jath is unconscious right there. Um, there he is. Poor Jath. Maybe I'll learn how to use him someday. And then I got a couple orders left and no real good targets to go after. So I bring out my Caliban. I think it was coordinated order to re reposition some guys. Yeah, repositioning the Hyduke who gets out of his foxhole and this daughter outside. They're both kind of like pulling back over here. Mainly so that if the dog warrior comes around, I can get a interesting arrows on him with the smoke and the heavy rocket launcher who's back there and the Hyduke through the smoke eventually. Yep, so they coordinate a move back over to there and the camp token coordinate moves all the way up to there. Uh, this daughter outside was also part of that, who was over here. He like runs around to this corner to hide there. He goes back into his foxhole. That's a full order, right? Cam token moves up to there, mashes on the button, reveals to be the Caliban uh, chain of command is successful in mashing the button, and then goes back into camouflage right there. Uh, on the other side, the Hyduke goes into suppression fire, and I think that's the end of my turn. Quick note on suppression fire. I'm finding it better in N4 than it was in N3. I was uh, All my friends know I kind of hated suppression fire in N3. thought it was almost always a mistake. In N4, things seem to be a little bit more direct going on, so that makes suppression fire a little bit better. That's kind of tipped it for me anyway, to using it more often. Like, even if you get spotlit, well, what was that? even if you get spotlit while you're in suppression fire, you probably should not reset to get out of that, right? You just let them spotlight you, take spin the order, and then let them keep engaging you. They'll get plus three for being spotlit, minus three for your suppression, so it's not that bad, and you'll still be throwing three dice at them. So, yeah, I like suppression fire a bit more than I did, so you'll see me using it more often. Okay, moving on to uh, Ariadna turn one, where they are in loss of lieutenant. This is us discussing the dog soldier here. And Petrus rules are a little weird nowadays, like what exactly you have to do. So we decided that he would have to jump up on top of the building there because it's slightly closer than running around the side, which is, uh, you can see the silhouette here, which is what would happen if he ran around the side, where a super jump up to here would get him just slightly closer to my deployment zone. Um, and that would get him a lot of AROs. He'd take shots from the uh, the Hyduke and Suppression and the Rocket Launcher, as well as whatever the Dadarasai does and whatever the Taiga does. So he chooses not to do that, which is sensible. And instead, he just walks over to here. Um, I think he, we get a dodge from the Taiga, and that's it. And he puts out smoke, I believe. Or no, he dodges and just moves out to there. Because the Rocket Launcher could see him there, and he successfully dodged it and got past the Rocket Launcher's view. So that's fine. And that's his irregular order. Um, he activates again, Dadaratsai throws smoke, he moves up, uh, I believe I failed the smoke, and the Taiga dodges over to here. I wanted to dodge into the terrain zone, so that I can start my next, should I survive, I can start my next turn in it, I'll have to stop when I hit it, to get a berserk off, or even just a charge, or whatever. Alright, over on the other side here, his camo token, this one here, is, has moved across over here. When it moved across, the M-Drone saw it from up on top and threw a Discover. Um, remember, I'm plus six for being a sensor. And that was really the only ARO that, it, that he got from that. That uh, long-range Discover is successful because of the sensor. So there's a Stray Lock right there. Stray Lock has SMG, Chain Colt, Mines, right? So he's pretty well equipped to deal with all these guys and all this stuff. He moves up to here presenting me with a strange situation because we've got a shrouded in camo here and he can see all three of these plus the R drone who's down there and the M drone who saw him when he was up there. I decide that uh, if I do nothing he's with the shrouded he's going to chain colt it. So we go for a bunch of dodges. Uh, Osnat dodges, shrouded dodges, Dodoratsai dodges, dodges normal too because he wants to tuck back. Uh, R drone shoots a flash pulse 
um, M drone shoots Kami rifle when he was back over there. It's a pretty bad shot. It's like minus nine, so he's gonna be on like a two. Right? But he's gonna try it. Why not? I guess I could have flash post also for slightly better results, but I didn't. Um, and what the Straylock decides to do then with the dodge there is SMG everybody once. Because remember, he's in a saturation zone, right? So he's one for the uh, Oznat, one for the Shrouded, one for the Dodoratsai. And amazingly, nothing happens, right? The Shrouded just appears there. Um, Oznat gets hit, makes her save, and Dodoratsai makes his dodge and tucks back a little bit right there. And my opponent, very low on orders due to um, loss of the lieutenant, but he decides to leave it there and let me deal with it on my turn, right? Because I've got a couple of impetuous guys right there, and he's got a chain colt, so whatever happens, he can just like, and mines he's got, so he can, he has some interesting options on his turn. So he, he leaves that where it is. Let me go back over here. I think what's happening is the, the veteran Kazakh is moving out over here and taking some shots. Uh, uh, at some point, the stray lock in the inside the building moves up and lays a mine here and moves back. I didn't notice at the time how far he moved back, but he moves back like into the corner of that building over of this building, which is good because I'll eventually try to shoot this with a rocket launcher to hit him, but he's not not within the range. Uh, okay, I guess I didn't get that. Did I? Okay, yeah. So the veteran Cossack here does move out. I didn't take pictures of it and kills the Taiga with a couple shots from his T2 rifle and then tucks back around the corner. Okay, there's the mine being laid, and then we're on to my turn. This is where I'm deciding what to do about that weird situation. Eventually, I go with the uh, sort of aggressive plan. I'm going to let the Osnat uh, impetuous into this guy. She should be able to kill him with her um, either Vulcan shotgun or, T or um, DA close combat weapon. Uh, he can chain cold and hit the Shrouded. So the Shrouded's already generated his order for the turn and has regenerate, so that's fine. The Shrouded can go down, hopefully regenerate at the end of my turn, and that's okay. Dadaratsai was already out of the way, and the Osnat can either make her save, or she can go down. She's done plenty of work. We'll be fine with that. Um, fortunately for me, the Osnat makes her save. The Shrouded does indeed go unconscious. There's his unconscious marker. And the uh, Straylock is killed by probably the Vulcan shotgun firing twice at point blank on template. And then the Dadaratsai runs forward and throws his smoke over there with his impetuous order. So... I really like using my impetuous orders. I'm very unlikely to cancel them uh, unless it's really bad. So this is a situation where I did lose a shrouded to get those two orders, right? But I've already got my order from the shrouded, so it's not that bad. And he's got regenerate, which uh, I like. Okay, this is the M drone moving around on top, uh, trying to get some more discovers off. Um, I think that I discovered a camo token that is like over here. And something discovered the camo token under there. I might have done sensor again. I don't I don't recall exactly right now, but there it is. Uh, okay, this is the Osnat moving up. Right? She moves she's 6'4, she's real fast. So she moves her way up to here with her first move, triggering some sort of ARO from uh, this guy, which is probably dodge, and then she runs across to there. There she is, not quite in his line of fire. She gets another order, and she runs around the corner into close combat with him. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. He dodges out to here, so to now get better lines of fire. And then in my next order, I just move into close combat with him. I walk around him, just in case things end up. I can be behind him, but it's not really a big deal. Uh, he, I think, attacks me in close combat because it's a 17, as opposed to a 16 with, with shooting his pistol. And I attack back using my martial arts level 1, and I, I win and kill the veteran Kazakh there. Which is pretty awesome, right? Um, now the Suryat decides to go for a walk. Remember I said I was going to be aggressive with him, because I have chain of command, and I'd like him. So his lieutenant orders just walks him all the way up here. He did nothing really to see. Until he gets to the corner here, where he can peek around there, and he's going to see the uh, stray lock in the building who's laying mines. Right here. He will also see the veteran Kazakh off in the distance there. But that veteran Kazakh is really far away for his rifle, right? And I've got cover. So... I think that I engage the, uh, the um, Kazak first, and he either dodges or fails guts back behind this car, so I don't see him anymore. Then I engage the stray lock, and it takes me like two orders, but I kill him. And then I come across. You can see I'm going for the objective here, right? I'm going to go around here, basically, and try and end up like right here, touching the objective. My thought being that uh, I'm pretty tough. I don't particularly care if I go into loss of lieutenant, so I've got a good chance to hold that objective for a turn. And if he spends his whole turn just trying to kill the Suryat who's on that objective, 
then that's fine for me, right? Because I'm still on the offensive and getting things done. So he walks up to there. This is, I think, where I had the firefight with the stray lock as I walked across. Yeah, and that eventually works out. I come around here. There's a mine right there, which blows up on me. Fail my dodge, but make the armor save, right? Because I'm heavy infantry. I got some armor. So that works out. Um, move up here. Touch the zone. As I come across the zone now, the veteran Kazakh will see me again. And we have a little bit of a firefight there. I think this is us checking range, right? 16, he's just out. Eh, out by about half an inch. So I think I uh, put a wound on him and end up touching it right there. And that's the end of the orders on him. Uh, back to the Oznet. Remember she killed the Kazakh over here? She runs around a corner to the other veteran Kazakh, who, <laughs> this is really kind of a strange situation. I run into close combat with him, and he suppression fires me. And then I attack him with my, uh, I can't remember what I attacked him with. If it was the shotgun, or if I just went for the uh, minus three with my martial arts. Whatever happened was neither one of us died. So he ends up there like still in suppression fire, but in close combat. Strange, right? Um, and I'm just right there. Uh, okay, that was the end of my turn. So far I've gotten only one button pushed and pushed up onto one objective, but I haven't scored it till the end of the turn. This is another impetuous discussion here. The dog soldier who's here, does he have to jump up on top of the building to get to the R drone? He is within zone of control, but the jump will not get him into base-to-base -base contact. And we looked up impetuous, we read for a little while. We decided that it says you must get into base-to-base -base contact if you can with your move, when you declare your move skill. So because he couldn't, we said that that wasn't going to apply, and that he would just run forward towards my deployment zone. So that's what he ends up doing. He runs forward. Um, I think that he stops at the zone right here. He started like right here. So that's what happened. Pretty sure we played that right. That's how we were doing Impetuous at the moment anyway. Um, it's a little, the wording on it is a little bit weird, because when you declare a movement skill, you have to get into silhouette contact with the enemy if you can, or just go forward towards their zone. But if you have like... Um, Berserk. It's not clear if you have to declare Berserk to get your double move into close combat, or if you could just move four, measure it, say I can't make it to the base contact, therefore I'll move towards your zone. It's unclear, I think. But, yeah. Okay, so he just moves up to there. And then we uh, have the fight in the middle. Straylock comes around the corner with surprise to shotgun my Suryat. He's got um, a boarding shotgun, which is pretty good. It's AP, but I'm AP immune, so I don't care about that. And what happens? First order, he puts a wound on me with surprise. Second order, uh, I think I started dodging. I shot him at the first order, then started dodging. And I think I just, I think I dodged successfully or made an armor save. I don't, I don't recall which. But eventually, with I think a third order on him, he goes prone because he was blocking the view for the veteran Kazakh. And um, not. Nothing happens. Like, I'm shooting or dodging, and no, no, nothing is happening. Remember, he's burst one because of the saturation zone as well. And then the veteran Kazakh fires at me, and I successfully dodge that into close combat with the um, with the stray lock, which should make me pretty hard to hit. Minus three for cover, minus six for guy in close combat, plus three for range. So he fires back on, again, sevens, I believe it is, and puts one round into each of us, and then I fail my save and die, and the stray lock makes his save. So... He got me off the objective successfully, but it did take like four orders. So again, I was okay with that. My daughter outside runs up on my left, doesn't really have anything to do. Uh, uh, then we're back over to my turn, right? Yeah. So as, as I um, was mentioning, he spent pretty much his whole turn dealing with this right here. So, impetuous order up. Uh, Osnat runs around with her impetuous order too, just forward or something. Oh no, she actually fights the veteran Kazakh in close combat and kills him with her uh, uh, double action close combat weapon. Okay, this is my Kaliban moving forward here. I move up, there's some uh, some holding. I just move up to touch the zone and stop. And then uh, the veteran Kazakh can see me from over here. Obviously the Straylock can see me. So new order, I just walk into close combat with him. Uh, there I am, again. I like to walk into close combat and still get as much of my move as I can. So I go around behind him there. Veteran Kazakh shoots at me. He, uh, I think, fights in close combat. I put a D-charge on him. Caliban are amazing in close combat, so I blow him up with a D-charge. 
you know, bathe in the rain of bits and gain two wounds. The Kazakh misses me with his T2 rifle. So there he is sitting on that. And then there's the Ozna. She's finished off the veteran Kazakh. Now she's going to go for a long run to try to get to the other Kazakh, who's still covering the objective there. So she runs through there, runs through there, keeps running. I don't know if you can see it, but here's the car the veteran Kazakh is hiding behind, right? There's the Caliban next to the objective right there. Uh, so she runs through the building here. Whoop, whoop, into the building. He gets a dodge if he wants it. I don't think he even takes it. She runs uh, around the corner there. He flamethrowers me. I put two Vulcan shotgun templates on him, and we both die. So that was a good run for the Oznet. I think she killed three veteran Kazakhs over the course of the game, right? Great, great performance. That movement six on her is really one of her most important parts because she's really fast. Um, okay, oh, I guess we did get into close combat, but the same effect. She runs out to there, and he flamethrowers me. I template us. We, we both die. Uh, okay, and then Caliban moves over to touch the objective. Dadarate runs up to try to get within eight to secure the HVT, but I fail. Eight is like right there and like right there. He purposely placed it at the beginning of the game, so if you were touching the objective, <coughs> you would not be engaging the or securing the HVT. Very good placement. I had two Ford Observe classifieds. I tried a couple times with the M drone on the top to um, Ford Observe the stray lock before I uh, engaged it with my Caliban, but I only spent two orders doing it as I was getting low on orders to do the much more important thing of getting the Caliban onto the objective. And I believe that was where the game ended. Yes, right? So I get three for having more consoles, the one that I got. I have two for uh, having my objective free of him. And I have one for touching his objective at the end of the game. So we have a, a 6 0 victory for the combined army. Hope it was exciting for you. It was pretty exciting to play. Um, uh, one other point to discuss about it was the beginning of the game, when my opponent deploys, he chooses to split his link team up. He's got enough to have a five-man link, but instead he puts two Kazakhs on the far right and the other three men, one veteran and the two front of um, He did that basically to cover more ground, which is one of the drawbacks of his limited insertion style army, where he can't necessarily get line of fire on everything he wants with one five-man link. Um, had he kept his link together, he would have pretty much had to cover only one side. And the veteran Kazakhs are pretty capable of being on their own. The front of X, not quite as much. And again, he's not as used to playing the front of X, which is why he had them a little too exposed. If he'd had only one of them on top of that building, that would have been a lot better, right? Would have lost two to the rocket launcher. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a tough call, he said. But he said that he th felt the coverage was more important, not to allow me to just completely walk up one side. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed the battle report. Feel free to ask questions below and I'll answer as I can. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.